How's everyone doing today? Sorry about the uh, technical difficulties. I was turning violet. So... Welcome one and all to the stream. Uh, for those of you that are new here, my name is Mac. I am the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. This is the official Dungeon Alchemist channel. And, uh, and this is actually a very momentous occasion because, and I have very great news, most of you may have heard already, but because of a user voice spoiling the good news, but we now officially have a category on Twitch. So what that means is if you are looking for streamers who are making or using Dungeon Alchemist, making maps with it, you can search that category. Or if you're a streamer and you use Dungeon Alchemist on your channel, you now have a home to create your maps with. It's been a very, very, very hard uphill battle to try and get this to happen. Many of you have been here along the way helping. Uh, you know, I know a lot of you voted in our... Uh, in our petition. Uh, I appreciate everyone's help. Honestly, I'm a little emotional thinking about it because like it was one of the things I wanted when I first started as a community manager. And it's been like nine months I've been pushing at it. Carl started on it a little bit before me and had no luck either. And here we are, we, we made it happen. Uh, it's a big deal. It, it means a lot to me. So the reason I'm so happy about this is up until this point, and I'm sure anyone who streams Dungeon Alchemist is aware, you didn't really have a place to stream. You would stream under TTRPG or D&D or just chatting or art under the four winds, just going everywhere. And now we have an official Dungeon Alchemist category. So if you're doing map making, you know, or session prep streams, now you can use that category and it helps tremendously. <laughs> I am very, very hyped on that. One second here. I'm just going to actually give you guys the link, guys and gals. If you could drop a follow on this category, it'd mean a lot to me and anyone who does stream Dungeon Alchemist related content. Um, I mean, honestly, it's been kind of a salty point of contention for me for months trying to get this to work. We had raised over 1,550 votes on a petition, almost 200 comments, and not one, not one response from Twitch staff until yesterday. So, honestly, like, I, I'm just happy because we did it. It's, it's, it, we, we did it, fam. Like, we worked together, and... And we accomplished it. We accomplished this amazing goal. Anyway, I am just so happy that we did that. And that's just a little... We got a little bit of housekeeping before we dive into more reveal today. Um, obviously, that's the first bit. Big announcement, obviously, is that we have a Twitch category. So I am so thrilled and excited to share that with you. Um... The other thing we have is the dam challenge. So if you're new here and you haven't been around, every two weeks, we host a a challenge, a map making challenge every two weeks called the dam challenge. And our current challenge was library. I issue a one to two word theme. And then using that theme, you make a map um, of any shape or size. And then you submit it in our discord. Uh, can someone drop the discord link, please? And we have a channel in our Discord labeled Dam Challenge. Um, and the winner of the Dam Challenge receives a $10 Hero Forge gift card. And they get the artist and VIP tag here on Twitch. Um, they get VIP, sorry, artist for a week and VIP for a month. So big deal about that is, uh, you know, I love hosting these little contests to kind of spur creativity around certain themes. Library was an interesting theme, and there was a lot, a lot, a lot of great entries, actually. There was too many good entries. It was very hard for me to choose a winner. Um, so hard, in fact, that I chose two. Uh, I did that because the damn challenge was on a break for a little bit, and so I figured, why not do two. We missed it for two weeks. So yeah, a lava flow in the ice is a really neat contrast, isn't it? 
Okay, so first things first, I'm going to start the giveaway for the 50 viewer before we hit 100 viewers because we are like right on the cusp of that next giveaway. So stay tuned and make sure you hit that follow button if you haven't already because you must be following the stream to enter the giveaway. What we're going to do is we're going to give away a Dungeon Alchemist Steam key. And it's a digital code, so you can redeem it right away or give it to a friend. If you already own it, um, you know, you can give it to a DM that you love or adore or give it to a friend or family member or give it away on your own channel, stream, etc. Um, we do giveaways every 50 viewers on these streams. Uh, we hit 50 viewers already. We're at 91 right now, kind of teetering between 90 and 100. If we hit 100, we'll do another giveaway. So if you guys and gals see us hit 100 viewers, my uh, my my moderators, etc., keep an eye on that. Let me know, and we'll do a second giveaway. But we're going to get this first one started right now. There's going to be 10 minutes to enter, okay? spinning and my office door was open so I heard and closed it sorry about that so first and foremost I um, am very excited about today's stream I will mention we are going to cover a lot of what we covered last week just for those that weren't here but there are a few little new things that are surprises that I will pepper in throughout some things that I want to share with you that are really cool um, so just stay tuned and uh you know if they if you've already seen this stuff please be patient and understand that some people here haven't seen that so this is their first time observing this new content so um if uh if you can please be your pay be, do your best to be patient and let people enjoy this stuff for the first time pepper me <laughs> how you doing dirty rollers so um, this last week, they've been adding content and bug busting a ton. The devs have a private channel where they talk about all the bugs and showcase them and like try to figure out how to fix them. And they are so diligent. Like, oh my gosh, you have no idea how hard they work to make sure this stuff is fine tuned and working well for launch. Uh, okay, so... Really quickly, going forward, because there's going to be a lot of questions in this stream, okay? If you have a question during the stream related to the stream, related to um, related to anything in, you know, Winter Wonderlands or, you know, like you're asking about the merch right now, Cast Ploy Trofer, okay? DA merch is in the works. We're working on it. Um, I got this hoodie as something to wear on the stream to represent our brand, but we are working to get merch, both for giveaways and a merch store to have for you all to use, okay? Now, going forward with questions, so very twisted, how you doing? Welcome back. With questions going forward, if you have a question, please type in all caps, question, then, you know, put a hyphen and your question. That way it pops out and I know it's there. It'll make it easier for me to see it. And then I will read it back to the stream and answer it the best I can. Okay? Yes, Will. That is the proper format. That's perfect. If you ask just like Will did, you will get your question answered as soon as possible. Okay? Hey, Lady Mustella. How you doing? So first and foremost, I want to say welcome one and all to the channel. Um, I'm sorry for the new format for the uh, the question thing, but there's a lot of stuff going on and we want to make sure it's easy to see the questions and answer them. So Joker asks, question, the video export feature is already done. Yes, it will be available in our next update on the 31st. Right away, there is a universal video export, so you can just export a 30 second seamless loop. We also have a foundry export, and I heard our lead dev is working on trying to get Roll20 working as well before launch. Fantasy Grounds does not support um, animated exports, so it won't work with that. But we're also trying to make sure that the universal video export has a UVTT file with it as well. So if you happen to use like above VTT or any of them that use UVTT and support animated exports, it will work with it. Next question. 
Would you ship merch to the UK? Lucian Von Ziegler asks. Yes, we, we, we looked into merch incredibly diligently to try and find partners that would ship worldwide without excessive crazy shipping costs. So yes. Aron asks, is there a plan for exporting 3D maps to something like Tabletop Simulator? You know, um, I, I would love to be able to answer that question. Right now, I mean, there is no 3D export with Dungeon Alchemist, and it was never our intention or plan to do so, to offer a 3D export. It was always supposed to be a top-down map, you know what I mean? With a 3D perspective. Does that make sense? So... I understand that that is a very highly requested feature. I will say that the devs have heard your questions asking for this, you know, hey, can we get 3D canvas support? Hey, can we get tabletop simulator support? They are looking into it and seeing what they can come up with, but I don't have a for sure answer as to when that will be, okay? Um, Raven Kinchin, you said, bummer, we use Fantasy Grounds. Talk to Fantasy Grounds. Ask them when they're going to get animated export support. It's 2023, man. It's time to, you know, futurize, you know? Uh, question regarding giveaway. Can you gift one to a friend if you already own? Yes, Hawkeye, of course. So if you own a copy and you win the giveaway, give it to a friend or family member or give it away on your own channel, whatever. Whatever you see is best. Question, did a second one start? I can't run two at a time, so when this one finishes, we will do the second one, Remy. Thank you. Oh my gosh, we hit 102 viewers, and I haven't even, like, broken out of this scene yet. You guys are insane. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Right? Um, Rhino Hyde, question, is there a way to adjust the individual dimensions of an object individually instead of a locked aspect ratio? Not at this time. It's a highly requested feature on our Upvotee. Can one of my mods please drop an Upvotee link? Um, Upvotee is our roadmap and suggestion board. That suggestion is on there and constantly gets asked and commented on. Uh, a lot of our assets are designed to be skewed and stretched proportionately, but I do feel like, you know, with time, that might be something we can offer for at least some assets. Maybe not all of them, okay? Oh my gosh, right? A hundred viewers. Can we just, everyone, clap for a moment and then take your hand and pat yourself on the back because we are just the best community in the world right now. The Dungeon Alchemist community is number one, okay? No one can compare to this community. First off, this is a brand new category that's not even a day old, and we have 100 viewers right now. Secondly, you guys are so supportive of this amazing product that we, you know, strive and thrive to constantly create and uh, deliver uh, new content on. This Winter Wonderlands update has been a struggle, and the devs have worked tirelessly on it. Um, I'm very, very excited to showcase what I can today and share what we shared last week as well. Oh, man. Okay. Let me see. Is there any other questions? I did, Professor Upsideism. I knew in advance I was going to surprise everyone today, but then user voice uh, tw emailed everyone last night, so the cat was out of the bag. But I'm very happy that we have it. Remember, if you haven't entered the giveaway yet, make sure you do. Type exclamation giveaway to enter, and you must be following the stream. We're giving away a digital copy, a, a Steam key for Dungeon Alchemist, the program you see in front of you. Dungeon Alchemist is an AI-powered map-making utility that allows you to generate maps in seconds, as well as fine-tune them by hand for hours. Um, <laughs> let's keep moving here. Questions. Are there plans to allow us to color part of an object? Um, there is object coloring that's stage one of that. With time, I'm sure that will evolve. Um... So I would say, you know, let's just see how that unfolds. I don't have a for sure answer, but many of our objects do allow you to recolor them. Some plants do, some, you know, like base structures and stuff like that. I'm trying to find something that we could. Problem is there's snow on everything, and so it wouldn't matter. Here's a mushroom. Here, let me take the snow off of everything. But some of our objects, you can recolor them. You just have to go through and find them, and we're slowly adding the hue shifter or color shifter to objects with each update. So you can, you know, make a black mushroom, a white mushroom, shift it through there, make all these different ones. 
Okay, where are we? Will Grams, are there trees without leaves available? Yes, there are. There are a few dead trees and there's actually a dead tree brush, Will. Look, in the object brush, go in here, nature. There is at the very bottom, two, a few new brushes. So we got the glowing mushroom brush, icicles, ice flows, and dead trees. And there's a few variants in there, or is it just the one tree over and over? I don't know. Well, we, we're still in bug busting, so they might have more. Anyway, uh, I could have sworn I saw a few extra dead trees. These icicles are really cool, too. I like them a lot. And then the glowing mushrooms are a nice addition. Uh, Rhino Hide, how often do you find yourself playing around in DIA outside? Oh, like every day. Every day. Between the fact that I just look at all your guys' maps for fun and look at them, and then I play around with it and tinker with it and try to come up with things. So, like, all the time. Let's see. Uh, hey, this giveaway is getting pretty close to ending. I want you to end slow chat when it ends and then make sure if you win the giveaway, you type exclamation claim. We got 50 seconds left. So make sure you stick around. If you win, you have to claim your prize. If you don't claim it in 30 seconds, someone else can claim it and you missed out on a free copy. So just stick around and then we're gonna be doing another giveaway. So if you didn't win that one, another one's gonna follow this one immediately, okay? So I got a little sidetracked here because we have so many questions. Let me see here. Question, is there a weather and environment control features? We just added the ability to snow any environment. So you can winterize your old maps. You notice here how this map has snow on the ground, but not on the trees. I can actually go in and winterize it. Now this is stage one of adding other weather types. So just keep in mind with time, this will progress. So this is the first weather type. Question, do the glowing mushrooms give off light in the VTT export? That's a good question. I don't think so, just a little mad. I doubt it. But you could always put lights under them. Every mushroom is edible once. Neologicer, you won. Congratulations. Make sure you hit claim. My man. Okay, let me get this uh, key given away really quick. I want to catch up on all my paperwork here so I don't get far behind. <sighs> okay. So, congratulations. Can we just uh, give our friend a nice pat on the back and tell him congrats for winning that giveaway I'm whispering you right now Neologicer and then once you get the key can you confirm in chat that you got it please I want you guys to understand that these giveaways are legitimate. We're a legitimate stream. This is the official account for Dungeon Alchemist. So our giveaways are real. We host them and we have every intention of giving these items to the people who win them. So um, just so you know, that's why we do them digital. So you can get it right away, redeem it, and you're good to go. Like, uh, there was talks about doing merch giveaways, but there's so much time involved with, like, shipping and stuff, and people are everywhere. Digital codes are the best, usually. I know, Rebsoft, but I just like to say that because it's funny in this instance. Winterize actually means to prep so it doesn't get frozen. I know, I know. But, you know, it's fun to say it in that aspect because it works here. Sometimes words get, you know, rebranded or, you know, new descriptions to them. That's just how language works. Question, is there anything in the work for a more comprehensive color picker? I'm colorblind, that bar's very hard. Um, you know, a lot of people have asked for like a hex picker. I don't know if we'll get that ever, but it is something the devs are considering, Ricky, okay? So there's stalagmites in these icicles, right? But there's no stalactites, obviously, the ones that hang. Hey Vance, how you doing? I am so far behind. Hey, Drawn Girl, how you doing? 
I am so happy you're here too. So Drawing Girl is one of our very, very talented 3D artists on Dungeon Alchemist. Can I, I honestly, I'm so far behind in chat right now. Let me start the next giveaway really quickly. We're going to start that. Can you slow chat back up, please, say Sue? I go, first off, thank you so much for being here. I am so happy you're here. Uh, Suriel, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. It's funny and interesting. I get it. I know it's, I winterize my, 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 you know, my different equipment in my garage. I have a boat. I understand what winterizing is, but to me, it's just funny to say winterize in that aspect. We could say snowify or something like that. It's just funny. And that's why I love it. Make sure you hit that follow button before you enter the giveaway because you must be following to do so. Okay. Ooh. There are so many people in here and I just appreciate all the support today. We're going to move on and show you some new uh, map generation op options that are available because they weren't available last stream. Okay. I am so excited for this release. Raise of hands. Who is excited for Winter Wonderlands? I don't think anyone in here is, actually. <laughs> okay, let me start a new map. Let's do a 30 by 30. So, obviously, the snow biome is the new biome. Last week, we pretty much only had flat hills and mountains. Now we have ravine, mesa, and crater. So let's just make a ravine. Um, and then we have all these different types of options for water flow. So we, well, lava flow is the one you were looking at kind of here. We have freezing river, ice field, lava lake. You know what? I want to see a lava lake. Let's do that. I'm kind of interested in this actually. I haven't even seen some of these. The updates get updated like constantly. And then I play around with them and get caught up and then show it to you. That is, the lava is just so beautiful. I could stare at this for forever. <laughs> oh my goodness. Iko, can I ask you a question if you're still here? Are you still here? I hope so. What is the fav your favorite asset that you've created so far? I appreciate you being here. What is the favorite your favorite asset so far? Right now, just a little mad ass question. Are there snowy trees or can we can place or do we have to use the snow weather? You have to use the snow weather at this time. It is so beautiful, right? Now, what's cool about this update is we've added the water brushes. So before you could only really just have the water, right? Water option. Now you can paint it to ice. We had the lava we were just looking at. We also have muddy water and my favorite Hawaiian punch. <laughs> blood <laughs> man i remember i loved that stuff when i was a kid but nowadays i don't think i could drink it it would probably kill me it's jam it's a river of jam okay <laughs> i uh, so the devs kind of responded about this and because they for months have said we won't have blood assets because it would raise our rating, right? And now they give us a river or an ocean of blood, like a huge body of blood. And then they said, well, this is more like kind of just like a generic thing. It's just a red river that could be like from, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's not necessarily as much as a blood splatter. But I, I it literally says it's blood. So, I mean, I guess... I, I just like giving them crap about it. Now, the best thing about the water brushes is you can actually have individual water types in different zones. So as you see here, or liquid types, we should say, 
I'm separating all these zones. We have ice and muddy water and bloody water and snowy water and clear water. So you can have multiple types of water on one map, which is great. Food color five. <laughs> Dia beat us. You, you are a man after Dwight Schrute's old, own heart, Bong. <laughs> so these brushes are very cool. And I'm, as far as I know, they're available in every biome. You can't paint indoors unless you remove the space indoors, just like previous maps or in like in previous, you know. So let's say here, I'm going to build um, one of the new special ice palace. Okay, we'll build an ice palace so you can see some of the new walls while we're at it. So let's say you wanted a pool of water or ice in here, right? Let's say you wanted the floor to be all ice. So there are ways to do this. So that what you would do is you would go into the draw room tool and then you would go to remove rooms and then you could cut out a section of the room. So that deletes the floor there. And now that's no longer considered room space. So I, uh, I'm gonna just hurry and use the object eraser to clean out those. And then I'm gonna go into the wall tool and then use the wall eraser. I go a little bit smaller because I don't want to erase those outside walls. Now notice here, it's just snow. I could then take the terrain brush, say like this ice brush, and just put it like that and have ice indoors. So technically, yes, you can. Or if you wanted a lava pit indoors. It's, it's not the most novel solution. It's not painted on top of it per se. So it doesn't look like it, but it is like a pool. The floor is lava, yes. Yes, uh, Sylve, yes. If you missed it just a minute ago, we have a bloody pool here. Let's change this one to muddy or ice or back to bloody or to lava or, you know, ice again. You can change them back and forth and have multiple types on the same map. Remy, why did you delete that one? I'm lost. That was a reasonable question, I think. I did forget the damn challenge, sweetest cook. I got a little sidetracked. But yes, there will be some reasonable AI improvements in this update. Quite a bit. Okay, I'm going to open up the damn challenge. So the first winner is Highland Last. Highland Last. She is an amazingly talented cartographer in our community. Uh, she lives in Scotland and she is a librarian and an amateur historian who designed this library. And it is just a beautifully warm, comfortable library. Um, not every map can be winterized because you can't winterize indoors, for instance. And this map is strictly indoors, so I couldn't winterize it if I wanted to. So not only does Highland Lass make a beautiful library, but she brings a lot of personal experience to the table as a librarian. And I'm pretty sure this is actually her workspace. Oh, Nikki, I didn't know you were here. How are you? It's a beautiful library, like. Well, here's the thing. We have two winners for the damn challenge today. So there is still one more map after this we're going to showcase. But honestly, I just really love the attention to detail. Here's maps on paintings here in the walls. Little like, you know, a guide of the library and all it's I'm pretty sure this is laid out just like her library at her school or wherever she works. But it's so, I mean, honestly, I just feel like I could bring a blanket in here and read books forever. I would never stop. Okay, I know there's a secret door here, but it's, there we go. Ah, it's a secret that I can't walk through. But hey, look at this. There's like a secret library back here with chains on the floor. That's okay. Now I'm a little scared of this library. It is beautiful. It's a beautiful map. And that's part of the reason I couldn't not feature it. It's Highland Last is incredibly talented when it comes to 
like hand building. She's one of our, seriously, she just is so creative in her builds. But what I love about her builds is she also goes out to historical sites throughout Scotland and then will remake them. So she's made some crazy like hill forts that are like, you know, they're only like rubble now and archaeological sites, but she rebuilt them. So in this case here, um, stacking was done very cleverly. Hold on one second. Let me get my music back on because I feel so weird without it all. Um, so one way you can always try and figure out how someone built a map is go in and reverse engineer it. As you can see here, she has one of these objects. And it's a table that she oversized. Now, normally it'd be very hard to get a table to this size. And I'll show you how to oversize a table to this size. And she just put it up there and then stacked books up on top of it and put a rotate, uh, you know, a spiral staircase going up. Wait. Oh, Zoya won. Did you claim it, Zoya? Claim it, claim it. Congrats, Zoya. It is a steam key for Dungeon Alchemist, but you only have about 10 seconds to claim it, so do it quick. Exclamation claim. Oh my gosh, sorry Nikki, I did not even notice your raid. I apologize so much. I thank you so much for the raid. Honestly, I was having all sorts of technical issues. You know how it goes, like you could have everything perfect before you go live and then it's just broken. <sighs> okay, um, someone... So the thing about the damn challenge is I've had winners that are the smallest tiny maps that like no one considered would be a winner. And I've had winners that are like crazy maps. I pick everything in between and I don't want anyone to feel frustrated if they don't win a damn challenge because there can only be one winner really. This week we're lucky that there's two. Not everyone can win, but the best thing is, is we all win because all these maps are shared between us. And now we have all these cool, amazing library theme maps to use in our campaigns and to look at and learn from. So everyone is in a different place in their cartography journey. You know, you may have just got Dungeon Alchemist yesterday. You may have been using it since the beta and you may have been using it since the beta, but only once a week or once a month, or you use it 10 hours a day since the beta. Everybody has had different levels of experience. I personally have over a thousand hours. That shouldn't intimidate you. I mean, I'm the community manager. I should know how to use this product, right? So keeping that in mind, I really want you guys to understand that like, if you see these maps and you're like, whoa, I would never win a damn challenge. Don't let that intimidate you because sometimes the damn challenge winners are ones that you would never even expect. It's not always these really intricate builds. It's builds that tell a lot of story in a small space or give you this feeling. I look for things that make me feel things more than like what they are. Does that make sense? It's hard to understand. I'm, I'm very, like I look at this map and it makes me feel comfortable and like that's what I love about it. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's the deal. We had some issues with the claiming of keys. <sighs> okay, so Zoya said they'll let someone else have it. So Rebziot wins. Rebziot, did you claim? Okay, Rebziot, give me just one moment. I'm going to hurry and give this key to, to Rebziot, and then we'll start getting back into answering questions, and then we'll showcase the next damn challenge winner, okay? And remember, if we hit 150 viewers, we'll do another giveaway. So host, raid, share the stream on your socials, tell your friends in Discord. More people we get in here, the more chances for giveaways. I know a lot of you are here to see Winter Wonderland's content. 
We're going to get right back into that shortly, so be very patient um, while we showcase the winners of the damn challenge who kind of got sidelined by me forgetting about them in the beginning of the stream. I was a little bit of house a little bit of housekeeping that we got to take care of. Uh, Rebziad, I just whispered it to you. Can you confirm? Uh, can you confirm that you got the key in, in public chat? Thank you so much. Winter Wonderlands releases on the 31st. Okay, so just a couple of days, three days from now. So Meet Wizard, you asked, where do our maps need to exist for the damn challenge? So in our official Discord, we have a channel labeled Damn Challenge. And that channel channel uh, is where you would submit your map. Pinned at the top of that channel is some rules and the current challenge. So after this week, we're going to have a new one. I'm probably going to announce. Uh, well, I'll announce the new theme after we finish, you know, showcasing the maps. Um, so we'll go from there. But I kind of wanted next one to be themed around the update. So there's going to be a couple days without entries. So anyway, just so you guys know. Anyway, with that in mind. Um, you submit your entry there as long as you follow the rules you're good to go there's usually i just ask for like a picture the damn file and then you upload your map to the steam workshop so it's easy for me to locate it in your descriptions of it if anything if you have of it um and then i can share it with everyone and by the way here is this map if anyone's interested in checking it out i'm gonna drop it in chat here in just a moment Okay, sorry, I just had a couple of whispers. Okay. Just discovered Dungeon Alchemist, really interested. Can you create? Yes, yes and yes. So uh, if you give me just a couple of minutes, zombie food, I will show you how to do that. But I need to do a couple things first because we're just a couple of minutes behind because we're showcasing maps that won a, a challenge we host on our stream, a map making challenge called the Damn Challenge. Okay, so this was the first winner. We're going to show one more. And then we're going to be showcasing teaser content from our new update that's launching on the 31st, okay? So there's lots of new stuff to see today. The other map was made by Betovel, and this map has crashed my DA like four times. That's why I loaded it last. It is insane, and the reason I am so shocked by this map is the book stacking and the shelf stacking, because they went through and like put in a lot of this stuff by hand. It's crazy. Well, that, that means the world to me that you're enjoying it, zombie. Well, Zalanth, there... I wouldn't call it a partnership. We... They're not our parent company, and we're not their parent company. We're independent companies. We just... Uh, we just uh, use their API to allow you to import your Hero Forge tokens that you've either bought in packs, uh, gotten as part of the pro membership, or bought as 3D digital minis into Dungeon Alchemist. So um, we gave you a few tokens when we rolled out this feature, and then you can link your Hero Forge account, and any you've gotten in the packs will automatically roll over. Remember, you guys, when you're asking questions, to use the question beforehand followed by the question, because I'm getting lost again. Um, if you share it on, if you share a map with here, your own personal Hero Forge minis anywhere, those minis won't export. The, only the ones that are included with Dungeon Alchemist will export, and that's it. Okay, 
So this library is absolutely insane, and I don't know how long I'll be able to run it before it crashes, but you got a system of portals, ladders, stacking, ridiculous amount of stackable assets to get multiple floors here, as you can see. <laughs> right? Imagine the book you need is right here, just up at the very, very top. I just realized you probably can't see. Oh, you see it. Okay. So imagine this is the book you need right there. The fuck you book. I mean, the F you book. Oh my gosh. Can't believe I just said that. My bad, yo. <laughs> this is the format. Yes, what Remy did. Thank you. Now that there's going to be a Dungeon Alchemist streaming category, are they going to partner you? Well, we need to get affiliated first, which I am... You know, we got a lot of people here. Let's ask the question, actually. So, would you guys and gals be interested in Dungeon Alchemist affiliating this channel, but only monetizing it for charity? 100% of all monetization in this channel would be for charity. So, any subs, any bits, any gifted subs, you know, things like that. Doing good, Icy. How you doing? I can extend the claim period, but I like it as 30 seconds, but I guess in the future I'll make it a minute. So anyone, if we, any revenue we raise on this channel, we honestly, we never monetize this channel because we didn't see the need to. Like we monetize, monetizing your channel is for creators trying to grow within that industry, but we're trying to showcase our product and showcase community maps. And so we felt it would be weird to monetize the channel. But I came up with this idea that if we took all the money we raised from subs and bits and ad revenue eventually, we turned that into charity. Uh, that's a very good question. So the reason, uh, what charity? We've been researching, I've been researching that, but part of me wants to support a charity that uh, plants a lot of trees and uh, does a lot to help recover and restore the environment. Um, uh, another one that is very near and dear to me is Game On for Lupus. Uh, my wife actually suffers from lupus. Um, there's a few different charities I'm, I'm reading into it. I think the first one we do is probably going to be something to do with trees yeah, see this book, these library, this library, there's so many books here. We need to plant a lot of trees. But not just that, but a lot of users in our community print maps. So there's a lot of paper and ink going into printing maps. And um, I think it's kind of response, it's our responsibility as the creator of this product to make sure that we're being, you know, as good to the environment as we can. Uh, that's one thing I, I think is, you know, smart along those lines. Trees are very good. Trees are awesome. Like, if you don't love trees, I'm sorry. So, we're still in the research phase, Moon Druid, but a charity would be um, something along the lines of... Oh my gosh. You guys, did you guys see that we are lead developers here right now? He just... Okay. Carl, my gosh, my man, what are you doing here? It's so late. He's got a new baby. He works around the clock making Dungeon Alchemist, and he's in here chatting right now. First off, thank you for being here, Carl. I appreciate you so much. I just barely noticed that was you that said it. Seriously, Carl is so incredibly talented. I'm not just saying that because he's my boss. Like, and working with him for the last few months and getting to know him and watch the team do what they do, they are so awesome. And watching Dungeon Alchemist grow and also the way they listen to our community feedback uh, and just like constantly are reading through the Discord and our socials and support you as creators, uh, cartographers, D DMs, etc., I am honestly constantly impressed. 
So yeah, we've got a celebrity right here. Aranus is our lead developer. Seriously, the brainchild. Carl, thank you for being here. It means the world to me that you're here right now. Okay, so... Um, before we move on, I'm going to announce the new damn challenge, okay? And if it isn't obvious already, it's Winter Wonderland, okay? So, um, it's going to be hard for people to enter until the update releases, so I'm going to, you know, just take the next couple days thinking about what you want to make, and then when the update launches, uh, make sure you submit your maps to the damn challenge section in the Discord, our official Discord, which there is a channel labeled Damn Challenge. The rules are pinned at the top. And uh, like I said, Winter Wonderlands is our theme for the next Damn Challenge. Yeah, honestly, let's, let's just gush over Carl for a minute because he's so awesome. I'm going to open one of the maps I've been working on lately. Seriously, Carl, uh, the community is so hyped for this update, and I'm so excited for them to get into it on the 31st. There's so much new content, tons of new assets, quality of life features. I just got to ask, Carl, while you're here, what is your favorite new feature in this update? I know you've been working really hard uh, on different aspects of it. So there was talks about diagonal wall walls earlier, right? I made this lovely little cabin in the woods. So... I, uh, I played around with angled walls. I played around with abstract objects. I've played around with the assets with roofing in this build. As you can see, there's a few assets that um, have removable roofing. Uh, there's a shed, an outhouse, a tree house. There's a few tents, a, a few different things that are incredibly beautiful and have removable roofs. Um, I see this as kind of a segue into us eventually getting roofing. A lot of the stuff we do is like, hey, this is a foundational step and then let's push it into later. This could be a very good way to segue into roofing eventually. So, Ernest says, I spent most of my time overhauling the AI and really like the way it now spawns chapels, for example, with properly arranged benches and windows and so on. I would love to generate a chapel while you're here and we could showcase that a little bit and you could discuss the AI a little bit further if you have time, Aranus. Um, but I understand you're busy. If not, no big deal. Um, so the question was asked, can you winterize a map that is already snow? Yes. So if you go into the terrain, you can winterize any map. Take an old map. As long as it's outdoors, you can winterize it. But if it's already snow, you can make it even more. You can add more snow per snow by going into the change terrain type go to the weather tab hit snow and hit change terrain and notice the terrain is immediately peppered in or in all of this powdered snow on all the trees the roofing any objects that happen to be outside indoors though is still quite safe uh oh it looks like it some snow got there because that's still considered outdoors i gotta figure something out for that That's a really good question, actually. Uh, can the community help improve, help in improving the AI? I wouldn't even know how to answer that. A rug is probably a good answer here, too. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's uh, just copy this bad boy, and then we'll turn collisions off. Oh, nope, the rug gets snow on it, too, because it's considered outdoors. We'll figure it. I'll figure it out. Roof needs patching, right? <laughs> I love this little build. I put a little cu cute little kitchen over here. Notice this corner is snowed on too. So that's something to consider. When you do the snow outside like this, you have to consider that for your build. So maybe just this amount of snow is enough. But a uh, nice little hearth and kitchen and uh, connected stables. So like, um, 
in some of the like old ghost towns I've been to, they would show like their stables would be connected to the home sometimes and they would bring their animals in during the winter when it was coldest. Okay, Meat Wizard asks, question, will DA go back to Kickstarter for things like DA, uh, DA theming, sci-fi, steampunk, and modern? So a few months ago on our stream, we had Vim, another one of our amazing developers, and Vim answered this question uh, in a way that I think, I think you should hear. And uh, basically what he said is, after we've left early access, which means after we've delivered on all of our Kickstarter stretch goals all of our free updates on steam via the kickstarter stretch goals so winter wonderlands floor is lava high seas instant dungeon all those once we deliver on that and leave early access then we will consider offering paid expansions for new themes such as cyberpunk space you know those types of things okay uh question will you make prefab for foundry or are we still doing that manually i'm not sure what you mean there uh bong so i don't i'm not 100 percent certain there i apologize question am i seeing new rugs ruined trees etc yes you are wolf gold so here is like a ruined tree and there's actually a ruined tree brush there's this moose skin rug um also with abstract assets, which I would like to talk about actually a little bit if you guys are interested, because there's a lot of interesting stuff that's kind of unveiled this week with abstract assets. So not only has the abstract assets grown tremendously, we only had like a circle, a couple squares, a block. So there's way more abstract assets. That is a very great answer. Thank you, uh, Carl. I did not even know how to answer that. I apologize. So these abstract assets are basically a blank canvas. Now, you look at these, if you've done any, if you've ever seen a green screen before or the news, they'll stand in front of a green screen, the weather's behind them. Now, using the same concept, you can essentially, I, I think this is called mesh mapping. Is that what it's called, Carl? Where there's an image and you put the image like uh, image file together in a way that it will wrap itself around these objects now i've actually texture mapping okay thank you sorry i'm not very smart with this stuff so i am so glad you're here so this wall is incredibly interesting in that <sighs> sorry one moment here so you can you know change its color apply textures so my wife she's so patient and talented she is so good on her ipad and she spent last week coming up with like all sorts of cool textures and skins and stuff like that so we could play around with this and figure it out and then vim released some templates to me and i've been just we've been oh my gosh once we got the templates it was a whole new ball game and i will share those templates with you today on stream so you can start making your own but let me just show you something we've made that I think you'll find interesting. So these are cyberpunk walls that we've put together. Here, let me turn the, the lighting to like a normal color. So as you can see, this is like a it's almost like a like a weird like metal wall with some rust and pipes and some lights in fact actually if you type template in chat it should pop it up right now the templates dang it i created a command and it didn't work one second one second mm. oh it's templates templates sorry s at the end Why do I always just make my commands the worst? Okay, here we go. Try it one more time. There we go. We got it. The cool thing about these walls is essentially you can make your own walls. So let me just map a new wall here to show you what I'm meaning. 
we have a hole. Here's one with actually a window in it. And because it's a PNG, you can see through the window if you with a token at that level. Here, I'll pop a token down so you can see. Now, this is just our first attempt at this. Obviously, with time, it'll get refined and better. Now, some other cool abstract assets that go in tandem with this and other ways that you can use the abstracts that are really neat. So there's this flat pane, right? So let's say you wanted to put some uh, graffiti on the wall, right? little thin it says damn mm, that template didn't work let's try a different one this is a big one big cheese wheel that my wife made so you can like add graffiti essentially yes not at launch with the only way we'll be able to share them is in discord right away uh, I've already spoken to Carl with this in great detail we plan to expand the steam workshop to support these customizable skins these customizable objects and the steam workshop will be getting a facelift hopefully with our next update i'm not 100 percent certain on that but there's talks of it now one thing i really like with these that my wife made that is just so neat check this out she made these really spooky eyes right and so you could like put these in a forest and then down at eye level, they're just like kind of peering at you. Right? So a great, like a spooky forest, something like that would be great. But you know, for immersion, you just, and at night, that would be, ooh, that'd be creepy. Here, let's make it night. Ooh, yeah. You just kind of see the eyes peering out from the tree. So the, essentially, if you look at the templates, and I'll pull up an image really quick so you can kind of see how they work. One moment here. Okay, so as you can see here on the left, oops. We have a template for the wall. It's a little thick. And then on the right, we actually have the wall. So you can kind of see them side by side. The image is a 1024 pixels by 1024. And then this, this uh, essentially template inside of it is where you would build this wall. So on the left, you see here, we have the wall sides, the walls fronts, tops, etc. The walls bottom. And then... You leave these spaces here blank as part of the PNG. This would be a negative space in a PNG. And then essentially, you save your file and then you apply it to that wall as this image and then it wraps around it or in the texture map wraps around that wall perfectly. So as long as you follow, as long as you follow this template, it'll work. Now, another neat side effect of this that I discovered while I was tinkering with this, and I'll show you here momentarily. Here, let's check that window thing because I am curious about that too. I don't think the light will peek through because the wall will act as a line of sight object, which I have confirmed that the, this and all of our freestanding walls will act as line of sight blockers. They'll act as wall data. They'll, walk, they'll you know, So when you use them in your maps, they will work that way. Let's see here. A wall with a window right let's see if we could put a light source behind it i don't know if it'll honestly they're not fully set up as light sources so it may not work right yet um <clears throat> now other ways you can use these so for instance in this build you can kind of see here we had like custom dirt on the floor there so you could put these panels out and essentially put a custom floor tile on it if you wanted to So I paired up with a, a member of our community named Hawks Talon, who 
he went through and just kind of pulled this from it and now we could put this tile essentially anywhere on the floor and rotate it however we wished and that's a great way for you to you know rotate the floor tiles in different directions add in your own custom floor tiles corner tiles rounded tiles so essentially you could get around this now notice we have rounded corners we have corner corners and we i actually you know went through and had some of these custom made for this purpose oops that one's not the right one yeah it does not fit to the wrap so it won't work okay, let's just put these on it because then it'll fit it no matter what but these are a great way to put a corner tile in and essentially fill in these corner gaps that you wouldn't be able to fill normally i I would love it if we would release all of the tile master files so we could cut them up and make all these that would be great you know uh, that way our community could do it but yeah you can in, in, enlarge a lot of the abstracts so this one here gets up to I think about a 20 foot but you would have to use the enlarge trick to get any bigger so we spoke about this earlier you can uh place like a like a structural object like this here and then place an object on top of it, right? Then you can stretch it and it gets bigger. And this way you can kind of supersede its sizing parameters and make it even bigger. So you can make that a big fireball template if you wanted to. There's not a custom door yet, but you can make a door on the wall asset to look like one. By the way, any of the custom assets, when you click on them and drop them for the first time, you um, and always there there's a little download texture template and it goes right to the template space so you can download the template and begin working on it we tried a round wall i don't know if we got it to work ah it worked little ice palace That's pretty neat. I like it. Um, they do not support GIF or MP4 or WebM. I would love it if these supported GIFs because then we could have blinking painting eyes or moving painting eyes or the blinking spooky eyes or neon lights that blink and flicker. You could have all sorts of things. It opens up a lot of possibilities. Um, it's not there yet. I would love that. I, I don't know if Carl's still here and could speak to that. Is that something that on the like we plan to do it in time, or it's just something you never anticipated people would want, or what? Let's see here. Back to chat. Oh, the file size, yes. You would definitely have to take that into account. So something interesting I discovered that is a byproduct of these customizable objects. You can actually load a blank PNG into it. And what that does is it makes it an invisible object. Now, you can still resize it and you can stack objects on top of it. So essentially, you can raise objects up with that methodology. And I've actually used that over here to hang this backpack on that hook on the wall. So you can't raise objects up vertically, you know, on that axis yet, axis yet, but you can trick it by putting it on an invisible, an invisible, you know, object. Um, this pillar, I don't think it's stackable yet. You can't put anything on it. I would love it if this top would be a stackable service as well as all the walls. Um, I'm not sure if it'll get to that point in this update or later, but at least this cube, you can take the cube, place it, and then put an object on top of it and then replace it with a blank PNG and boom, it's floating. Um, I do believe that the walls will block line of sight. I don't think the blocks will. Our pillars don't block line of sight either, but I was told that the walls will, but not the flat plane, for instance, but the planes will not, okay? I think it's a very neat trick. Abstract objects are going to change the way Dungeon Alchemist works because there, I know there's artists out there that are already salivating at the, at the possibility of making custom cyberpunk and sci-fi and space and all these different time frame assets. 
Yes, minis can be placed on the blocks. I actually tested that and shared it in our Discord the other day. And the blocks are stackable. So here, let's make one and like, uh, so make the first one as big as you want and then make it invisible. And then stack another one. Oh man, it's hard to see them. But yes, you can definitely place a token on top of it. You see there, it's floating. Put this cobalt up there. Now, another cool way these assets can be used. Um, so in this well, for instance, I placed a customizable circle with a water hole kind of thing. My wife made this as like an ice fishing hole, but I thought it worked great in the well too. So now that well looks like it actually has water in it instead of like an endless pit. Honestly, I mean, you could use very basic assets and get this same. Oh, sorry. I do miss questions sometimes. Question, will the invisible cube block a person first person mode? It's an object, so probably, yes. Uh, where is the other question at? Can we make, no question, does winterize object work for garden rooms or ruin rooms? No, it only works for the outdoor space. So if as long as a room was drawn using the draw room tool, the snow cannot go inside of it. But if you like cut out some of the flooring, you could have some. So like if I say deleted this space, for instance, hold on. And then I winterize this map, there would be snow inside. So you could do that in some, oh man, I just ruined part of this map. Ooh, uh, let's see, let's do it in here. It's gonna just delete so much stuff. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna save it. So we just hurry and delete these walls and now we have snow inside. And then you could make it more patchy with like these circles by putting them there and putting snow on that. Or these have like just white coloration. So you could kind of just make little custom whatever. My wife also went above and beyond with these and made a few other things. Here, let me show you an example of some of the things you can do with this. So here's a blood smear on the floor. Let's uh, try and put actually over here, we're gonna put a hand smear of blood. Might need to have her raise that up a bit, but as you can see, you could start decorating spaces with this stuff and make it more like interesting and more decorated. So, <laughs> I've actually, my wife has gone through and made a ton of blood hand smears, blood hand drips, uh, wall splatters, like a bunch of different effects for graffiti. Here's one that I absolutely love. I heart dungeon alchemist. <laughs> That's so cute. She's so creative and just so helpful because I like have these ideas and I can't like articulate them and then she just puts them out in a second so you can do graffiti um you know all sorts of neat little things here is oh our alembic but all of these graffitis by the way i'm gonna put them on our discord all the blood splatters and everything she's made i'm gonna give them away for free copyright safe anyone in our community can use them just a gesture of my goodwill to share with the community so people can start using this out the gate running yeah, I'm going to put all her stuff in a zip pack and release it on the Discord when we're all done with it. Yep, okay, so the... Uh, hold on one second, let me get the music back on. I always feel so weird when it's off. So when you're inside of a building like this... Um, so if you go to the draw room tool and then the edit room tab and select the room inside this room it has this tab here and it shows show ceiling in cinematic mode and essentially or it says show open sky in cinematic mode and this is an immersion tool 
that if you are recording in first person or walking around in a token in this mode, it blacks out the sky. Unfortunately, you can still see trees and stuff outside, but it makes the sky no longer like as prevalent and as a, it helps with immersion. Notice the blood splatters, the the uh, the graffiti. It looks great in first person, actually. That's lovely. Oh, I can't walk through that. Darn. No, it will not winterize inside. It will only winterize inside wherever the walls, wherever there isn't floor. So like in these corners, I made custom dirt patch flooring and put in corner walls. And if I winterize this map, as a result of which, it puts snow in the corner spots where like there isn't technically wall data. Like there's a room here. But there's no room here, technically, and there's no room there. So the snow is, like, on top of part of my kitchen stuff. So you got to be considerate in that of that in your builds when you're winterizing them or not winterizing them. So if you have a lot of custom flooring and diagonal walls in your build, you may not want to winterize it. What did they say, Sack? I didn't see it. Sorry. Hey, see you later, Aconite. You have a good one. Okay. Let us go to another map. And we'll showcase more features. Oh, really? I did not know that. Okay, well, that's cool. That's interesting. I apologize, I missed that in chat. So let's try that really quick. Yep, you can, wow, that is awesome. See, I learn new stuff constantly. So here's the deal, the process of how this works is I get the updates and then I play around with it and figure as much as I can out. It's kind of like a guessing game for me. <laughs> but that is pretty cool that you can snow inside. That makes it way more interesting. Here's a little build I'm working on. So you could do that on Abandoned Ruins map. My bad, yo. There we go. The more you know. G.I. Joe. <laughs> Two shows combined. Let it snow. So these are just uh, a bunch of Ender objects if you... Go to nature. Uh, we got these new crystals, but under winter, there's a whole bunch of, oh, the blocks of snow. I'm so glad we had these. I was going to ask if we were going to get these, but we have them. And there's a bunch of these icicles, and I would just kind of play around with them and oversize them a little bit. And as you can see, that one's here. I turned off collisions, and I just started putting more and more of them in until they overlap to make this beautiful, like, sharp icicle gate. I kind of was going for kind of that uh, that frozen palace vibe. Um, I, that's a good question. I don't think we can erase the snow inside like this. Let me just open a terrain brush eraser. Nope. There's no having it. Which frozen stuff? Like the icicles? Yes, some of them are brushable. Man, it is so white in here with that snow. All right, so we got... Oh my goodness, what just happened? So let's uh, let's change this room back first off, so you can kind of see what I did in here. There's a lot of snow assets in here that I wanted to showcase and effects. 
So I put some blue fire, some will-o'-wisps, and some cold, like, kind of fog or steam or whatever. I guess it's not steam if it's cold. But there's also, like, some neat um, ice pillars and ice throne, ice lamps, statues. These lamps here, actually, I just changed the color to blue to kind of give off that more cold vibe. My favorite asset in the uh, update is Fred, this guy. Um, okay. I would love to get Aranus on the stream sometime, but he's shy. I've been, I've asked him numerous times. It's not for lack of trying. Can you save one of those abstract objects with the correct texture so you don't have to? Yeah, so once you've applied the texture, I don't think it's saved inside per se, but you can copy that one. So let's say you apply a texture to this bad boy, right? Like we did earlier. So we put a cyberpunk wall there and then you could just hit copy and then that one will be copied. But if you want it saved in DA, that's probably a, a step down the road. I would imagine not easily anytime soon. Does the color change the option mess with your image or just the... No, I don't think... I think really all that does is if you wanted a, just a different color wall for right then, then you could just use that, you know? Um, so in, if you wanted just a plain white or a plain black wall, for instance, or a green wall, you could do whatever. Once you change the skin, that's the new skin. It's no longer that color underneath. Anyway... Okay, so on this map, you can see a lot of effects. Um, like, a lot of effects. So, effects are a new addition in the next update, and you can see the tab here in the bottom left. You click effects, and there's tons of new effects. Um... Many in this map I themed around the map. I put in some blue smoke, some cold fog, some wispy white fog. I put in some willow wisps. They kind of fit in really good with this kind of mood a little bit. I know. See, he's a busy guy. He is a very, very busy working on this project, being a family man as well. I think in the future it would be nice to schedule something way out and then just get it taken care of. And uh, it would be nice to get you on the, the channel sometime, both to just have you on as a guest and, you know, ask you questions related to DA as well as get your insight because, you know, you know t everything pretty much about DA. I would love to, to pick your brain about our AI sometime because I feel like that's where I don't really know a lot about DA and AI is a very intimidating and kind of hot button subject right now. That's fine with me. Speaking of which, um, an interview, um, we actually got invited to do an AMA on the Foundry subreddit, uh, which is actually very, very cool. I'm very excited about that. Uh, I, it's scheduled on the 9th of February. I'm hoping that our both of our you know lead devs will be there, Carl and Vim. I was going to be there as well for support and help answer any questions. Um, but the AMA is mainly centered around animated exports, which will be launching in our next update. Um, because Foundry has animated map support and our exporter will support Foundry at launch. So Foundry Animated Exports will be available on the 31st. Um, you also have Universal, uh, just video exports, so you can create a looped video if you wanna use it on any other VTT you might use, or just play a looped video on like a tabletop TV or whatever. Right, Nikki, isn't that awesome? Uh, AMAs are always so fun. Um, 
Carl, is there any progress on the Roll20 animated exports? Will that be in this update or is that going to have to be pushed back? Uh, wow, just a little mad. Did you see that, Carl? He said he'd cancel a D&D &D session to listen to you guys talk. That's, wow, that's, that's dedicated. Here, let's open up a blank map and we'll play around with some effects. Let's uh, check out a Mesa. That is great news. Thank you. Awesome. You know, that would be awesome, huh? So, <laughs> this channel has been growing so much the last few weeks and months. Like, uh, it's, I like to think of streaming, like, and anybody who streams a lot knows this to, to be true. You'll, you'll instantly relate to this. Streaming is like a snowball. And you start with this little bit teeny snowball that you rolled up in your hands, and then you, and you, you threw it down this hill, right? And then it just starts rolling and rolling and roll. And then it, it, at first, it's not a lot of momentum, not a lot of, you know, picking up a lot of snow. But then eventually, it just becomes an avalanche. And I think this channel and Dungeon Alchemist in general is on the cusp of a tipping point going into an avalanche, especially on our Twitch channel. In the last two weeks, we've gotten 200 followers on this channel so much growth in our community um so much interest in the new update so much uh just general camaraderie in the community between our stream and other streams you know we have a few streamers here in in channel in chat right now i've been supporting many of you as you've been using dungeon alchemist making maps or using it in your campaigns uh i am just so excited to see the future of dungeon alchemist getting a category was so surprising like honestly i had all but given up we were about to try some crazy like scorched earth tactic to make it happen and then we got it so getting a dungeon alchemist category on twitch is big news breaking a thousand followers and here we already at 1150 on our way to 1200 Hey, Wolfie, you have a good night, man. So let's look at some animated effects really quick. So what effects would you guys like, guys and gals like to see? I'm just going to leave this up and we'll, we'll ask. Hey, Joker, thank you for the kind words, man. I, I work my butt off. I love our community so much and I try my best to support every, you know, YouTuber and streamer and cartographer out there that I can. Does Albert support animated exports yet? Or animated maps? Zaylith, you won't have it until the 31st. So someone wanted to see fireflies? Let's do some fireflies. They do look really cool. Little wispy guys. Right on their own business. I would love to show Alchemist, especially since you ask so nicely. It's green. Let's turn down the, let me erase some of this and turn down the brush size and the density. I don't want to do anything. Oh, still on clear effect. I love that green fire. Show everything. How you doing, Zalanth? The blue fire, we saw that in the last build. But, let's see the cinders. Oh, that would look good above the, the lava here, especially around the edges. Just kind of gives off that extra heat vibe, you know? 
So a waterfall would be something for our water worlds update, which I don't know where that update is going to land. Our next update is going to be floor is lava, which will be basically focusing on caves, lava, mines, stuff like that. Um, notice how the fire wisps are above the lava. It just looks really, really like extra hot there. Eternal flame. I like that one because it's just like, like, a, like a radiant blast. Dang, Zaylanth, you've been busting butt making maps, man. Do some fire. Go to the next one here the black smoke i think a lot of people will love this because this is a great way to essentially simulate a fog of war like i mean boom you got yourself a fog of war simulator right there cut that is a it is a quest marker right um i would also call it like a shoot what is that like first level uh like cantrip that most clerics have good question let's drop one in there it looks like black smoke can't see a whole lot barely an inch or two in front of their face That was a very good question, Remy. Go ahead and erase that. Let's do cold fog. It just gives off the impression it's very like early morning cold. Oof. Very bright. Like hurting my eyes. Are the animations lifting the character? There are a few stalagmites in this update, but you won't get stalactites because we don't have roofing. You know, you don't have ceilings in the cave. You just tell them there's theater of the mind stalactites. Go ahead and erase this effect and we'll try another one here. Necrotic fog has like skulls floating through it. They're kind of hard to see, but you can see them in there. There's some steam. Sacred Flame is the exact one I was thinking of. Dirty Rollers, thank you. I haven't played a lot of uh, clerics, so I don't know all their spells that well. Then the electric arcs. So you can kind of just make it look like there's some crazy electricity going on there. And we did the fireflies and then will-o'-wisps. So that's all the effects available in this update. I've actually put effects into a few of my maps. Let's check out... Well, we've seen the, the ice palace already. The hot spring I showed it last week. Wolf gold, yes. So there's no progress on it yet um, because there's just been so much going on with the update that that hasn't been a priority for anyone, really. I'll be honest with you. Um, but I, I, Carl's here still. I might even just ask now. Carl, I mentioned we talked about this briefly in the past of expanding the stream to possibly doing, uh, you know, more streams, not necessarily just. Uh, a damn stream showcasing maps and community builds or you know teach outs but maybe a campaign being hosted on the channel um i would love to discuss that with you further obviously in private but um 
there's been a lot of talk about, you know, maybe hosting a stream where we do a campaign here on the channel and we use Dungeon Alchemist maps. I think it'd be pretty fun. Um, obviously, you and I need to discuss that more, but that's what they're talking about, so you know. Can you change the colors of the Will-O-Wisp? I don't think you can change the colors of effects yet. Once they're out, they're out. There's no way to change them at this point. So you can either just drop them, uh, Will-O-Wisps, or use Fireflies in their place. Unfortunately, it's one or the other. Well, these... So, obviously, we have these reveal streams, which only happen, like, right before we reveal have new content dropping. But every week, we do the damn streams, which are essentially tutorial, teach-out, AMA format streams. During those streams, you can come in, ask me questions about your build. Uh, we showcase community maps and share them and, you know, give you an idea of what, uh, what other people are sharing on Steam Workshop. Uh, in addition to that, um, we host the damn challenge. Uh, so we have like a bi-weekly, you know, map making competition so people can test their metal against each other and show their skills. And then we showcase amazing maps and then do teach outs. I honestly would love it. And I'd love to chat with you more about it when you have some time. I know you've been incredibly busy. I've been super busy curating content every day, working on the trailer today. That's what I'm going to be doing the rest of the day after the stream is the trailer. So it's i get it we're busy but it's something we need to just bring to the table soon and discuss both the charity idea and that i discussed the charity a little bit with vim but it would be awesome to really you know because the stream's just been so busy and big and i would love to have maps with da in either foundry or fantasy grounds or even just using da as a limited vtt sometimes so I don't like the idea of doing a tutorial stream and editing them for YouTube because streams are unpredictable and I'm very, very random. I jump all over the place answering questions and doing things and I can't trust myself to stay focused on the task at hand from end to end. I know I could edit it for that purpose, but I really prefer shooting tutorial videos for their purpose and shooting them for content and time and you know having a script and everything so it's just as to the point and concise as possible i hope that answers you guys' questions so in this map i just built like a little uh a little sauna and a little uh hot spring and as you can see the steam it's just a very subtle simple map Oh, thank you, Zaylin. Yeah, we'll chat about that later more. I love the tutorial videos too, but uh, they were toned back a little bit so we could focus on short form content. Like you guys see all of our, uh, you know, we've been grinding on Instagram and TikTok, um, Facebook Reels, YouTube Shorts. Um, in fact, I'm just going to drop some links while we're talking about these. If you guys use any of these platforms, please drop us a follow on them because I am actively... Oh my gosh, I can never get the TikTok one to work. Never. There we go. TikTok, one word. Um, uh, is there... Will there be a way to mirror images? I know you can flip doors. Uh mirroring objects is on the roadmap it's in our suggestion board i don't know when it will be coming unfortunately i think it's a little bit more trickier than uh it seems on paper because not every object is designed to be immediately mirrored and flipped and worked perfectly but um uh, that's i know that i've seen vim at least talk about that in the past i i would say just you know stay tuned to the roadmap our upvotey <laughs> clock sound honestly i i've been learning the tiktok community some tiktok videos drive me crazy there's like this trend of a video that these videos aren't funny at all but they just you know they put the effect of someone dying laughing on top of it and so people will watch the video trying to figure out why it's funny and then they'll comment and like upvote it and stuff and they're like i guess it was funny but it's like putting a laugh track on a tiktok video i hate it so much oh 
goodness and the abstract objects be made not to impede a first person view for example using a ton of cubes corn textures to make a corn to walk through a field i mean hold on i know we just got a bunch of new food assets so i was gonna look at that we got some pumpkins and some beans where is the food stuff I know there's a bunch of new farming assets. I don't know if corn's one of them. But yeah, um, let's see. I, I don't think... I think they do block your path. Because like a wall or a cube would block you. But if you're using like the thin one, for instance, I don't know if this one would block it. Let's just see if you can walk through it. Some of these things I just have never even tested until people ask it. So you can walk through that abstract, but the wall would be like a solid, if I'm not mistaken. Or the cube would be a solid. So let's put, like, this wall and then one of the cubes. And, hey, I could be wrong. Science! Nope, you can walk through that one, too. B that one you cannot. But I have been told this should act like a wall and have line of sight data, so maybe it's not functional yet with that. Question, when will we see the dance challenges? What dance challenges are you talking about? When all the goals are released, will there still be considerations for quality of life improvements? I mean, I, I would think it's smart of any developer for constantly, you know, improving and offering patches after they leave early access. I mean, games leave early access and they're still being updated and patched and developed for a long time. It would make sense to continue supporting the product not just with paid expansions, but with, you know, fine tuning quality of life, uh, you know, features, etc. So I, I would imagine, so I can't speak 100% to that, but it only makes sense for, you know, from a, a business standpoint to continue doing it. They, uh, yeah, thank you, Carl. I'm so glad you're here because some of these questions I just can't answer earnestly because I don't know what's going on in your mind at all. You know, like, man, I need to just sit down and ask you like a thousand questions one day. But it looks like, I, I would imagine this would act as an object you can't go through eventually, correct? Mac in a Hendrick costume. I mean, that would be pretty cool. I don't know about the dance part, but the costume would be cool. So we are getting some new crops. I know there's bean crops, pumpkins, and a few other things in the next update. Um... Here, let's look at just new objects because when they're sorted by new we can see a lot of them so bean crops basil bay laurel there's this thing with bay leaves in it put out this amazing sled i love this sled this thing is epic someone put a lot of time into it it's got so many like lamps and lanterns and roofs and doors and It's got like a furnace to power the sled and then a furnace to heat the sled and then a seat in the front with like all sorts of levers and gears and stuff. Oh, there's so much stuff culinary wise. You will love it. Um, oh, these bells are pretty neat. You can just hang up a little bell. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's see here. There's fun guys for all you fun guys. There's this chalkboard, which is customizable, so you can change the image on there with, let's put in some, put in the I Heart Dungeon Alchemist graffiti. Oh, did I put it on the back one there? I don't see it. Oh, it's on the back. Yep, hard to see because these trees are in the way. There, you see it, it's hiding there. <laughs> That would be neat. Honestly, I, I feel like these abstract assets are going to be incredible addition to our community in that they are just so much potential in what you can do with them. And I know so many people in our community are just going to crank up their artistry ability to 11 and just start doing all sorts of crazy stuff with these. So we've got some cauliflower or cabbage, I guess you could call it in this instance. Here's some cinnamon sticks in a bowl. <laughs> what other stuff? Oh, I love these compasses. 
there's some more covered wagons by the way two or three wagons being added this coach is really nice and then a covered wagon um a lot of mining stuff asset wise because we were planning to release both updates in this uh you know flora's lava and winter wonderlands but we had to tone back the aspect of the flora's lava that we were releasing so there are some flora's lava assets but uh not so much you know flora's lava environments i love this like mug this cup metal cup but here we have three different dead trees so there's this huge dead oak another dead tree another dead tree the brush earlier carl was only putting out this one dead tree i wonder if size was a factor and that thing's huge so a few new dead trees these are the kind of trees that uh that that rip apart scarecrows what's the purple stuff Oh, these are crystals. And there is no color slider on these at launch. I asked Vim if there would be, and he said, I'm most likely next update, there will be a color slider on them. And they don't light up. It would be cool if they had a light source on them, but as always, you know, you can just put a light source in them if you really wanted to. So my favorite go-to is to take a candle like this you know, make it purple like that, and then boom, put it inside there, and then it just kind of emanates a little bit of light. If you want it to emanate a little bit more, you can turn the light up on that candle, put it inside, boom. So those crystals are now... I love going through the objects with you guys, because there's just so many new objects. Let's see, what else do we got here? Tons of snowmen assets. Oh my gosh, here. There's like a whole section with them in it in the gaming section. Like all of the snowmen pieces, but there's tons of snowmen heads and bodies and stuff, so you can make all sorts of different ones. There's a a, a snow orc, a snowman, a couple snowmen heads, some prefabs, a goblin, just a prefab body, a snow dwarf, a snow bird. Got a bunch of different snowballs, obviously our friend Fred. You know what would be cool? Take one of these pumpkin and then put a jack-o-lantern head on it <laughs> plague snowbird right but um back to new objects there's just quite literally a mountain of new assets that are available that uh you know would take you quite a while to go through um one of the biggest new assets that I haven't had a chance to cover today is some of these neat new, like, force spheres and the force wall. I don't know if Kaode's still here. Kaode, are you still here from earlier? I know you were here in the beginning of the stream. If I'm not mistaken, it was Kaode who found a, in, uh, an Easter egg in Dungeon Alchemist and pointed it out to Vim, and then they made this object for them as a reward. So if you find an Easter egg in Dungeon Alchemist, you can get a custom object made is what at least the the bounty is right now that would either be more of a mini situation i mean i could see that being an effect that we offer or something that you would put in in like a in your sorry in your virtual tabletop you know so if you use like foundry there's like fx master that does like birds or rats or snow or all sorts of stuff scrolling oh my gosh this doomsday device is really cool my doomsday device it moves it's animated the professor would be proud look at these gears these are cool they just like constantly spin so it's like you could there's actually a like an elevator this right here this is one of the new ones a minecart elevator so you could just put this like on top of that and make it seem like it's spinning these guys up or something like that you know put 
but a second set of gears right here. The elevator is a fixed size, unfortunately. You would have to do some damn editing to resize it. The gears can be resized, though. There's a funny new Easter egg with one of the older objects that have been requested a lot of times on Discord. Not really. We should probably put a list of them. Maybe a section. Okay, Carl, I want to know. Well, when you make an animated export, for instance, you could just play that file on a five-second loop. But yeah, I understand if you don't want it constantly running. Vim was saying there's Easter eggs from, like, back in the beta that still haven't been found. And he won't even tell me what they are. The problem is, if you don't know at least a hint of what you're looking for, it makes it kind of hard. And, and so I would love to have like a, like maybe we put up a treasure trail of like little, like, you know, fun puzzles or riddles and then people could find them. It'd be neat. Oh my goodness. There was also talks of di uh, a disable all animation switch, right? Right, Carl? An Easter egg hunt. Yes, an actual Easter egg hunt would be awesome. And this thing's awesome. Got little headlamps. Okay, cool. At least it's good to know it's something you're working on. It gets asked a lot. And I think it's just mainly people who, you know, are maybe on a bit older machine, but they're trying to make as many, as big of a map as they can on Dungeon Alchemist. I mean, Sack is someone we can speak to about this. His computer he was using before his most recent rig was, it took 30 minutes for him to boot his computer. And so I'm sure people who can disable the animations and just squeeze every bit of RAM out of their machine, it would help. Oh, Wolf Gold, you need to sleep, my friend, so you can be prepped for all your amazing maps you're going to make, right? Let's open up a new map. Uh, I think I had another build I was working on that we at here. Hmm. Oh, this one was fun. It snowed inside. Let's get rid of the snow. Oh my gosh. Is there a floor in this now? What is going on? My floor is gone. Did you guys add that floor like we talked about, Carl? So I had decorated this with like all sorts. Oh, that. So there's a floor on this now. Makes sense. Too funny. I was hoping it'd be clear on the bottom so you could still do like ice fishing. See, I had set this up with ice fishing holes there, where it was like they were in the igloo just camping and fishing. So it's now just a snow floor. That makes sense. Okay. So you put an object in, it goes on top of that, but then the object moves with it. It's very hard to move the objects, though, inside. Uh-oh. Yeah, can't really select them. And there's a lot of snow in there. There's like a foot. Holy cow. <laughs> I love being part of our team because the devs 
on occasion listen to my feedback and incorporate it into Dungeon Alchemist. And it, it's, it makes me feel very important and part of the team because like I'm like a million miles away from the whole team and once in a while I'll have an idea and I'll shoot it over to Vim or Carl and they're like, yeah, that's a great idea. And I love that because it just like, they're really receptive to your feedback, our feedback in general as a community. And a lot of the ideas that I pass their way are ideas that you guys and gals have shot me on streams and, you know, on socials and stuff. I listen to you and I try to pass your feedback on. You're self-employed, which means you give yourself a week-long vacation. You're the employee of the month, and you get a week-long vacation. Did you guys see the doctor's note I put in our Discord a couple weeks ago? I'll repost it after stream. I put up a cheeky doctor note that was like, Hendrick was the doctor and telling you, you had cartographitis and needed a couple of days off. So if you wanted to utilize this in something like Foundry where it's top down, you would want to make two exports, one with it open, one without. So when your players enter this, they would, you know, you could use like monks active tiles and then it would show the open version. Now, obviously you have things like fog of war to help supplement that. But you could have two maps, one with and one without. And then when they enter that building, then the, the roof is removed. Does that make sense? So Foundry is a great one to use that with because Foundry actually has systems in place that could supplement and make that work. Man, we still have 100 people in here. And we're just showing off like just, you know cool snow assets let's see here what else do we have to show we're actually only about five ten minutes left in the stream now today for the first time ever we are going to be raiding another stream and i have never done this mainly because i wanted to make sure i was raiding a channel that i had visited before and knew their channel and knew that we were raiding a channel that i like and trust and secondly um I, this channel is actually, we are sponsoring a giveaway on their channel uh, after this. So um, there is a streamer who his name is Eccentric and Eccentric is one of the first streamers I've seen use Dungeon Alchemist as a limited virtual tabletop. And essentially his players, most of their session is, is theater of the mind, you know, and they do some RP and then they bust out the maps on Dungeon Alchemist and his players tell him where they want to move and he moves them around and they interact with the environment. A church? Oh yeah, let's do that. Sorry, we'll do AI drawings. Yes, let's focus on that. I got so sidetracked. We'll do that for the last five minutes, okay? Oops, generated this with a lava pit. Don't want a lava lake. Let's just make it a nice field. Neat. Let's actually, there's no water. Dang, there's a lot of neat ones. I might need to add some of those in the trailer because I didn't have any shots of those neat environments. Gonna have to do some reshoots. <laughs> hey, you know what? Quiet, you. Get rid of the snow. Let's go ahead and draw a chapel. Let's see. Castle chapel. So I'm going to make it big. We're going to do a 10 by 12 chapel. Wow. That was very well organized on the first pass. So the pews are very, very symmetrical, organized perfectly. The pillars are symmetrical. There's no random pillar. And then obviously they have the, the diocese and stuff up here, the little fountains, the whatever. And then it's, it looks very 
very, very organized. It seems how a, a human would organize the room, right? Let's refresh it a couple times, see if we get any different generation. Whoa. Whoa. That. Yep, you gotta just dunk them babies. You guys seen that video of the priest? He just doesn't give a, doesn't give a hoot and he's just like, woof. <laughs> yeah, this one's way better organized for sure. Let's regenerate it again. One of my favorite things to do is just regenerate rooms over and over again until they look kind of where I wanted it to start. But as you can see, there's a lot more variety in the floor, in the organization of the pews. The door moves around, the pillars kind of change, but it is much more symmetrical as a church should be. Here, let's draw the crypt chapel really quick. Neat. A little bit different, so it's more, you know, just stone or like a cult. You know? Like that. One of the, the new how try and draw like a like the cabin. I really liked how the cabin organized. Okay, I don't really understand why there are cannons inside the cabins, but you know what? I'm all for it. Oh my god, there's a play button on it? That, oh my gosh! Did you guys just see that? It shoots a cannonball that rolls around! Again, 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 again! <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you have uninvited guests. That is actually hilarious. I did not expect this at all. This is so funny. Let's look at our other cannons. The mortar fires too. Oh my goodness. Oh, they should. It's a play button. Yes. Oh, no. You can't touch it. There needs to be an interact on these because it's a play button. It should. That is so cool. Hopefully, we can get it like we do with lights and doors and stuff. So, you could just boom, fire. <laughs> uh, I, I'm cool with it being a ship's cabin. This is not all. Oh my gosh. So you added animations to how many different objects? Well, here. So first off, I just had to come into this map and do this a couple of times. I'm pretty sure this one has the ballista on it. <laughs> they, they fall off pretty quick. <laughs> it doesn't go too far. It's only like 20, 30. Those are mortars, but like you can see it falling down over there. <laughs> Okay. That is my favorite find of the update so far, is that teeny little animation of the cannons. That made my day. Yeah, so that build is made by Alavera, and it's one of the winners of our dam challenge a few months ago, and they made airships. But, I mean, the cannons add so much more to it. Okay, hold on. Okay, the heavy crossbow does not fire yet. Nope. 
Nope. Hmm. 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 Help me think of what objects it might be. <laughs> I want to share that on socials later. Thank you for that. Smart. Wait, where is the magic item section? Isn't it like... Isn't it under utility down here at the bottom, typically? Oh, here it is. No, no, it's not. Structural. This treehouse is pretty cool, though. You guys want to see this? I, haven't, I don't think I've shared this on stream yet. Yeah, but we knew about the treasure chest trap. Uh, there are customizable rugs already. This one right here, for instance, this customizable carpet, you just put whatever pattern you want. People use this for like magic circles or whatever right now. Um, but if you had a, a pattern for a carpet, you could put it in there too. But now when we have the abstract circles, these ones, then you can just replace that and do magic circles that way or carpets that way as well. A Shadoof. Okay. I'm just, oh, there's the magical ones. No play button. No play button. No play button. That eye with snow on it is kind of unsettling. I'm not going to lie. Like, could you imagine just a huge eye you can't, like, wipe off getting covered with snow? <laughs> this is a new object. This candle of darkness would actually go really good in our Hocus Pocus build sack. The black flame candle, basically. Hmm. Hmm. Here we are hunting for Easter eggs. Okay, it's time to wrap up the stream, everyone. I had so much fun. Now, remember, we are going to be raiding another streamer who is hosting a Dungeon Alchemist giveaway on his stream today. I'm going to drop his link in chat, but we're going to host him, and then we'll, we're going to raid him and head over after we end the stream, okay? I had so much fun hanging out with y'all today. Thank you so much for being here and allowing me to share this amazing work from our team. They put in so much hard work and effort and I'm glad you all enjoyed it. It was so much fun sharing all these neat new things with you, sharing the category information for Twitch, uh, showing you how the abstract objects work and whatnot. Um, thank you again for being here. Thank you for being a part of it. Uh, Obsid here, if you weren't here earlier for the abstract objects, here's templates for them. You can go check them out. Uh-oh. Thought I had it working. Dang it. Here, I'll give you the link. Here's some links for the custom templates. If anyone wants to get a jump on the templates and start learning how to make walls and skins now, if you make a skin, send it to me. I'll put it in DA and show you what it looks like with a screenshot so you can see it before it launches. Feel free to ping me on Discord and whatnot. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, like I said, we're going to raid. So give me just one second. Okay, so we're going to go in. We're going to say hi and everyone tell them it's a damn raid. So I want you to go into chat when we get there and type damn raid like this. Okay, in chat. Oops like this so copy and paste that in so you can uh yep i will be dropping a link here in a moment for you and you follow that okay and then type that in chat so we, he knows you're coming from our channel okay you ready 
Click the link, go in and type Damn Raid in the new channel, okay?